Um, so yes, so as I mentioned, I'm your uh, organizer here for the Toronto area, and we are a global network. Um, it's a TechSoup's a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use tech effectively. And we are uh, global. Um, now, Eli, is this number still accurate? I thought we were over 128. I think I might have an old slide. It's an old slide, but accurate enough. Enough, close enough. <laughs> we're all over. <laughs> Um, it, we're pretty wide networks and it's been pretty fun being virtual because we get to meet people from other countries as well. Uh, these are a few of our community values. Um, obviously it's kind of uh, com mostly common sense stuff, but it's worth mentioning. We welcome everyone. We put our community first and, you know, I, we like to support each other and in order to help build stronger nonprofits and we use technology to do that, um, both through our presentations that we offer and uh, now virtually as well, using things like Zoom. <laughs> we love to have people participate. So feel free to ask questions. Um, and going forward, if you have any ideas for presentations that you would like to learn more about, or if you have something you want to share, something that maybe worked well for you in your own nonprofit, or if you are in the tech industry, if you have something you want to share for other nonprofits to be able to learn from you, we would love to hear from you. Um, I'll provide my email address later. Whoops. And obviously, we treat each other with kindness and respect. That kind of goes without saying. So a little bit about TechSoup. Uh, you can learn more about them at TechSoup.ca. Basically, they give you um, access to technology at really affordable prices. And in some cases, there's even free items that you can get, such as Google for nonprofits is uh, actually free. But you do need to validate through TechSoup. And these are just a very few um, of the uh, vendors out there that have products available through TechSoup. Um, I've already mentioned anyone can kind of help with planning an event or giving ideas. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any ideas to help increase participation or like I mentioned, if you have any other topics that you might find of interest. Um, a little bit about me before I pass this off to Chris. I have over 20 years of experience implementing a variety of systems from HR systems to CRMs to all sorts of other systems, uh, real estate as well, for all sorts of uh, nonprofits, small businesses, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and large government organizations. Um, so I've been uh, very uh, immersed in technology for a long time now. Um, I'm also Google Cloud certified. So if you are interested in getting on Google for nonprofits, uh, please reach out. I'd love to help you take advantage of that free offering. I'm here because I'm passionate about helping nonprofits and businesses work smarter and not harder. Uh, I, I love this platform here that TechSoup has that we're able to bring all of this technology and information to nonprofits who might not have had uh, the same opportunity somewhere else. Uh, and one of the other reasons I'm kind of here is because I'm actually part of a nonprofit as well. I am the president of the One Parent Families Association of Canada. And in setting up that organization, I've had to set up a lot of their systems and processes and uh, to make sure that they're operating efficiently. So that whole kind of marriage of tech and uh, nonprofits uh, has been with me for a while as well. So I'm going to uh, stop talking and I will hand this over to Chris, who is going to share some interesting information with us, I'm sure. Um, so Chris, I'll let you Tell us a little bit about yourself and what we're going to learn from you today. Amazing. Yeah, I have it all uh, set up for the intro. Uh, super excited to chat today about uh, marketing software. We have uh, a lot of great software options to go through, and I'll definitely overview there. Everyone can see the presentation fine? Yeah, excellent. Right. Give me a second. Okay, so leveraging marketing software to build a mar uh, marketing funnel for your nonprofit. Before we dive into anything, just want to stay high level for a second. Uh, within the charity industry within Canada, there was about $10.6 billion donated in, this is 2017, so it might be a bit higher now. Uh, but it hasn't been growing for the past decade or, or, or 15 years now. 
and the average number of organizations donor support is around 3.8. Why is this important? Well, there's a growing number of charities that are competing for a pie that's not growing, but they're not, not growing in and of itself, which means you have to be super efficient and super smart with your marketing, both spend, allocation, and strategy. Uh, software enables that and allows for better automation, a lot smarter decisions, uh, but it needs to be part of a larger strategy. So there's some pre-COVID annual operating budgets of what marketing's part of, and as, as I, uh, everyone who may be part of a nonprofit or leads one, uh, marketing dollars are extremely restricted. So it's more important to know what not to do than it is what to do. Uh, so when it comes to leveraging software to figure out how does it fit within my strategy within the market, which we'll walk through, uh, and then more importantly, how does it help me leverage and, and uh, scale tactics that I implement. So today we're gonna to go through three key areas. Number one is brand positioning. This part does not touch on software, but it's necessary to set everything else up so that you know how to, why you're leveraging the software in the first place. Once we get through that, we'll go through marketing funnel. Uh, we're gonna stay high level here and focus more on the software usage because we could talk for days about how to best set up your marketing funnel. And finally, measuring success. So when you actually implement your marketing funnel, you implement your software to optimize and, and be super efficient. How are you actually gonna track and measure success to know that you're heading in the right direction? So more of a high level overview on marketing strategy in, in addition to leveraging software. So a bit about me before we dive into it. So I'm a graduate from the Ivy Business School in Toronto, uh, sorry, in, in London. Uh, I've founded three companies in the past, one successful exit. Uh, I've consulted with both marketing strategy and uh, website development for over 30 businesses across 19 different industries. So nonprofit, real estate, fashion, uh, beauty, uh, private equity, uh, done it, have been, been a part of a lot of industries, which has allowed me to really learn the principles of marketing and what actually works across multiple industries um, and, and not just tactical things that may help one individual. And finally, my volunteer side, I'm a Canadian delegate for the United Nations. I'm the private sector representative for the youth, uh, and most recently at uh, UNFCCC. So throughout this presentation, I'll be leveraging some examples from Charity Water. Uh, Charity Water is one of my favorite organizations in terms of how they display themselves to the market, how they position themselves, uh, and more importantly, how they make the donor feel like they're adding a lot of value. Um, they've done a terrific job, so I'm going to leverage some of their uh, homepage designs and emails to show his examples as we move forward. And before we dive in, a caution on software. Software is only viable if your team and yourself actually utilize it to its full extent. A lot of times I see software implemented, um, but it doesn't get fully utilized. So it ends up just being an added cost with no added benefit. So when it comes to the examples I'm going to show, I'm not diving heavily deep into every, each individual example. I'm staying high level. And with that, you could take that as inspiration on trying to find either that one or a comparable example that you could implement in your uh, nonprofit organization. So first off, brand positioning. The three key areas we're looking at here is what is the market landscape? What do you stand for? And who are you targeting? So the market landscape is key to understand before you even start building your marketing funnel. Obviously, every, every marketer knows this, but to understand why, we must review it. So first off, the market size and growth. We already reviewed that the market size was about $10.6 billion in the charity space in Canada. So that's the total addressable market. From there, you have to figure out within my organization or how I'm positioned, what's the serviceable addressable market, the SAN. And this just means if we do, for example, we target a specific geography, let's say British Columbia, or we target a specific vertical, let's say um, educational nonprofits, that's your serviceable adjustable market within the total one. This allows you to understand how large can we be scaling and what is our potential goals when it comes to figuring out who our target audience is. And then growth rate's a huge, huge point as well. Once you figure out that, understanding who your competitors are, and technically every nonprofit is competing for the same pie of dollars, so you have to consider them as competitors, even though uh, everyone you know, wants to donate for a good cause, because they're competing for attention in dollars, right? So once you lay out your competitors and how they're positioned within that market, you could figure out where does the gap exist for myself to position our brand and our nonprofit so that we could attract our specific type of donors that'd be um, applicable to our nonprofit and break through the noise. So when it comes to market size, I, do a, I did a quick 10 minute uh, research on a, a simple takeaway you could get that's applicable to software. So first I looked at what's the market size and growth. This is where I got that $10.6 billion number. And we can see 
Adjusted for inflation, the industry has not grown much since 2006. There's an annual growth rate of 0.9%, so it's completely state or nearly stable, uh, which means, once again, the pie isn't growing, so you have to be really smart about how you allocate your capital. The second thing I found was that online giving grew to by 17%. Uh, this is back in 2017 again, uh, compared to 6% in total giving, uh, and that's non-adjusted for inflation, which means that a majority of the dollars are shifting to online. And finally, when I looked at an online giving index, this is from Canada Helps, monthly donations have been scaling in comparison to single donations. So just by this quick market research, there was a key takeaway I found. How much people are giving isn't changing, but the manner in which they do so are. So what does this mean for your org? Well, if it means there's more monthly subscriptions and people want to spend money online, is your organization allowing that and offering that to your end donor? If not, uh, are you potentially losing out on a large share of those donor dollars to help uh, your nonprofit make a larger impact? So this is something that was done in 10 minutes and imagine what you could do with a much larger market analysis and how that could affect how you spend your dollars and be very, very focused with your marketing and overhead spend. Next is what do you stand for? So a lot of organizations know what impact they want to make, but communicating that to the end customer can be difficult because they have a knowledge bias, as in, I know what I stand for, but other, everyone else may not understand that. So there's a simple method that has a lot more research behind it, but it's, a, it's called the I help statement or we help. So we help who with what, so they can do what. Uh, so for example, we help um, children, or children in underprivileged communities with getting access to a quality education so that they could have an impact in their communities and grow throughout their career. Something like this that could be organized simply could be, and communicated very focused to your end consumer could then help them relate what do they want to give back to and what are you actually doing as a nonprofit? Like why am I donating, donating money to you? So this is the charity uh, water example. So this is just a screenshot from their homepage on their website. And first thing I see is they have their mission or one liner right away. A lot of the charities I looked at did not have this, which was shocking. Um, but for example, here is we believe in a world where everyone can have access to clean water. Join us. This is a cause I care about. I already know what their mission is. They also have a monthly donation call to action. That research we did prior for the quick market research, they're offering that as their main call to action on above the fold on their homepage. So they're allowing people to donate monthly. Their $40 USD a month is probably researched on uh, the average person, average someone that one is willing to donate monthly. Below that, they have a clear cause and effect. So your $40 monthly donation will lead to this, right? Um, this is huge for, for, um, for donors because at the end of the day, the, the nonprofit isn't the hero in this, the donor is. Your job is to help guide them to where they want to go, which we'll get into. And finally, an overview of their impact. They're very, very clear on what they do, what their impact is, um, and how I would be contributing as a donor. And they have a clear call to action that aligns with the trends in the industry. Um, so they know who they are, what they stand for, um, and how they differentiate in the market, all seen within one screenshot from their homepage. Finally, is who you're targeting. So once you know what the market landscape is like and how competitors are positioned, you know who you are and what you stand for and how you want to be positioned, who you're targeting is the next step. With limited marketing funds, you have to be super focused on targeting. So this is a simple software from HubSpot. It's called Make My Persona. It allows you to create an avatar on your ideal customer. Though I do recommend diving a bit deeper because this is a much more simpler and high level version, but it gives you some good guidance. The idea of an avatar is my customer, let's say it's Chris, I'll use my own name. Um, he is this type of person, this age group, this income demographic. Um, this is his likes and dislikes, brands he associates with. You want to know everything about me and my type of segment and amongst the other segments you may target as a nonprofit. Because when you do so, you're able to craft all of your marketing messages and all of your marketing campaigns and strategy and tactics around those personas. So you heavily focus so that your marketing dollars go further as opposed to just spending across the spectrum. Now, this is a framework from, it's, a, it's a, called the Story Brand Framework. There's a book called Building a Story Brand, highly recommend it. And they leverage the story format of movies and books to apply to business. And it's a very simple way of thinking about it. Step one is a character. In this case, it's the donor. Um, that character has a problem. And that problem shows itself in three ways. There's external, internal, philosophical problems. External may be my feeling of having anxiety or that emptiness feeling in my stomach, which is a result of an internal problem of maybe I don't feel like I'm doing enough with my work 
which is a philosophical problem of me wanting to have a larger impact in the world. Figuring out who your character is, so who you're targeting, and what their problem is, is key, because then you can figure out how you should be positioned. As a nonprofit, you are the guide in this journey. You are not the hero nor the character. And your job is to show the character how, why you understand their problem and what to do about it. So you give them a plan. In the example of Charity Water, that plan was you spend $40 a month, every month, and over the next year, you'll have an impact on 12 water projects. And then you give them that clear call to action. Do this next, and then you'll be able to solve those external, internal, and philosophical problems to avoid disaster, in this case, that feeling of emptiness and ending success, the feeling of impact. So by laying out this hero's journey, and I just explained a very high level one, you're able to think through how your brand is positioned and how should it be positioned in the market, which will then align all your copywriting on your website, all the copywriting within your marketing to target the problem that your character is facing. That was high level brand positioning. Um, we could go into it further. So you, uh, if you ever want more questions that have to reach out or answer uh, any questions at the end. But next we'll go into the marketing funnel. And this is where a lot of the software as per the, uh, the keynote will be discussed. Um, the software we're gonna to touch on will be around generating leads, nurturing leads, and then closing donors. So high level marketing funnel, step one, generate awareness. So what does your brand represent? Step two is converting leads. This usually implies collecting an email or some sort of contact for your CRM, uh, customer relationship management system. Then it's to nurture and close those leads. So if they're not donors right away, how do you make sure that over time you give them more information, more education, and more of a reason to donate and close? And then final advocacy. We're not gonna tap into advocacy at the end because there's not much software around this. So we're gonna stay with the first three. First off, generating awareness. Um, Four areas I wanted to cover. There's so many different tactics you could leverage, but I just wanted to keep it simple. Digital advertising, social media, blog posts, and press. Within digital advertising, there's a bunch of softwares you could use. I narrowed it down to three really good ones. Adderall, HubSpot, and Hootsuite. So uh, I know someone mentioned HubSpot before. HubSpot is an amazing CRM that has awesome uh, mark integration. And they actually have an integration with Adderall that allows you to use a lot of artificial intelligence, connect all of your uh, add softwares together in a system to see how you're spending money and where you should reallocate. Um, and I actually have, uh, what's it called? So uh, AdRoll and HubSpot have a great integration, which I'm pulling up now. This is a video demo. Did everyone see that video, by the way, easily? I wanna make sure that uh, everyone's playing correctly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, perfect. The visual's yeah, so, coming through, the audio the less so, but I think that's okay. That's fine, yeah, as long as the video was there. So the reason I wanted to share that was because that's an Adderall integration with HubSpot. Why is this important? Well, whatever CRM you're using, and we'll get to some CRM options afterwards, you wanna make sure that it integrates with all the other technologies because Adderall, for example, is a great way to dis have displayed advertising. Um, Hootsuite's another option as well, but Adderall allows you to have, all right, we have these Google ads going, this Facebook ads, it's integrated with our CRM, either if you're a B2B focused nonprofit or a B2C focused nonprofit. With that, you can see exactly where leads are coming from, what they're clicking, what their actions are, calculate all your attributions so that you're very, very data centric when it comes to applying a marketing spend, as opposed to just having our CRM and then running some Facebook ads. You really wanna make sure those integrate really well and you wanna make sure that all of your platform is together so you know what works and what doesn't. So when you're measuring and tracking, you can reallocate budget and, and focus on what does. Next, we have social media. So these are social media planners, Hootsuite's another, once again, Hootsuite's a great old companies in platform. There's Buffer and Agora Pulse. I'll walk through Agora Pulse. 
Um, these are just ways to manage all of your social media accounts into one and get good analytics and data to figure out what's working, what doesn't, who's my audience, what are they interacting with. So for Hootsuite, or Agora Pulse, apologies, um, they have a, a lot of great features. So here we have a unified social inbox. So um, if everyone could see, there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. So you can see all of your pages, all of your accounts under one, one page where you can reply to DMs on one platform. There's that intuitive publishing. So this is a way to publish across multiple platforms. Social listening, so being able to track, all right, what are, your, what are people saying about you, about your competitors, about your industry, whatever it may be. So you could stay on top of trends to post more social and interact or to see or to correct things if they're going wrong and there's a bad social buzz around your brand. And finally, just as importantly, the insightful analytics. So there's great tools on what you're publishing, the interaction with it, the content, et cetera. So having a social media platform, something like an Agora Pulse, like Buffer, like Hootsuite, is extremely beneficial to make sure that you're on top of uh, what you apply on social media. Um, and then connecting that data to, let's say, your CRM, like HubSpot, so you have everything, once again, coordinated to see who's interacting with what. Um, so you get a, a really data-centric and holistic picture of who your customers are as they start rolling in, or who your donors are, apologies, as they start rolling in. Next is blog posts. Blog posts, uh, this is very high level, but anything that's a content management system, so CMS, something like a WordPress, which a lot of people might be familiar with, um, they run about 50% of the internet, so they're quite popular. Um, but there's a lot of other content management systems you could leverage for blogs. Um, and the great thing about something like an ad, or, or which we'll get into later, you can see how blog posts impact potential donors, um, which we'll get into a software on within the converting leads section. And finally, press. Press is more about managing reach out, or outreach and coordination. You can do this simply in Google Sheets, which I know uh, NetSquared has access to uh, G Suite and, and Sandra is a G Suite expert. But there's also Airtable. I brought it to this up prior, but Airtable is a great way to um, more of a data, more of a data table you could leverage um, to track everything. So they have amazing templates here. I just searched press, for example, oops, P R E S S, uh, and you have some great options to manage and track uh, press. So PR media lists, you have a, a, a firm CRM, PR outreach. So let's just go to this one, for example. Um, and here you can see the air table, which is more of a data table, less of an Excel sheet, where you could connect fields from different publications. So you could have a, a bigger deep dive. You have fields like links. You could put images in the, in the cells much more cleanly than you can with the Google Sheets, for example. There's great filtering, some different views you could leverage. Um, so air table is a great tool to use um, if, once again, if your team is willing to, to uh, take on the learning curve. Um, but each cell could open up as its own sort of CRM in and in of itself. So you could find all the details for a, a, an article, a post, or a, a whatever it may be. Um, so definitely take a look at Airtable if you're interested in more of like a, um, a, a data solution and less of an Excel sheet solution to manage and track press or whatever else it may be. Next, we're getting to converting leads. That was a little bit of software that you could leverage to generate awareness. When it comes to converting leads, like I mentioned, it's about collecting some sort of piece of data on the customer. So maybe it's email. Email is a classic one. It's a low-hanging fruit, and it's super valuable to nurture. Two areas I want to cover for potential uses is transitional CTAs and marketing analytics. So a transitional CTA, what it means, a CTA is a call to action. So um, the main call to action, let's say, is donate now. If a customer is, or donor is not ready to donate, you need a transitional call to action, which is, okay, if you're not ready, do this, give us your email. And um, that way you can nurture them. So for example, download this ebook is a classic one. Uh, and with that download, you gotta give us your email. This transitions them to a nurturing phase, which then you could transition to a full call to action. So some software you could leverage, there's Upwork, Instapages, and GoToWebinar. I'll start from the bottom, GoToWebinar, um, I just didn't want to use Zoom since everyone has Zoom fatigue, but it's another option. Or we have uh, it's another option to leverage uh, when it comes to doing webinars, which is a transitional call to action. Give us your email, and you could sign up for the webinar. Uh, Insta page is you could leverage to create landing pages. So I'll pull up what that looks like. So here's Insta pages homepage. So it's once again another version of a, uh, um, a CMS. So you could organize pages super simply. Uh, have a call to action be download this ebook or whatever it may be download this pdf on our impact or uh, or whatnot uh, watch this video um, and you could create very beautiful very simple landing pages um, could also use wordpress but instant pages is very focused 
And then finally was Upwork. Now Upwork, you could leverage, uh, I had a previous a talk on NetSquared around Upwork and uh, leveraging softwares alike to find great freelancers. So here I just searched ebook writing. Um, you could post a job post as well and invite people. Uh, but you can see there's professional ebook writers, uh, content writers, you could just hire for relatively cheap, say 25 bucks an hour for this person. Uh, and you could help produce those transitional call to actions. Um, so leveraging Upwork, Instapages, GoToWebinar, all, all very valuable. Next is marketing analytics. So if you're not already integrating Google Analytics with your website, you definitely should. Um, there's a lot of tools in Google Analytics that you should use on the advanced stage, which is more around uh, ensuring there's goal conversions and tracking those, seeing who your demographics are, what sources they're coming from. Google Analytics is just a basic, you should always have integrated into your platform, your website. But I'm gonna dive into or Oribi. This is a platform I learned about recently. I'm, I have a, uh, about a three, four minute video I'm about to play that's gonna walk it through. Um, but when it comes to marketing intelligence, it's extremely, extremely uh, good at executing and helping you learn what works and what doesn't, especially if you're not super data forward. So I'm gonna play the video now so you can understand what the platform looks like. Wondering how a Rebe works and what makes it different from all the other analytics tools out there? Here's a short- Is the volume playing by the way? Uh, for the video? I hear it. Okay, great. Review that'll give you the lowdown. Oribi is a marketing analytics tool which will help you evaluate and optimize all of your marketing efforts from your main campaigns to new posts you release. It will help you analyze the flow on your website, showing you what leads certain visitors to convert while others leave your site. While Google Analytics will certainly give you important data, Oribi sets the bar higher. In addition to providing you with data you can trust, Oribi was designed to solve the problems that users of Google Analytics face. Yes, this is your chance to be data-driven without the headache. So what's different about Oribi? First of all, it doesn't require any code. You can define any event on your website, button clicks, form submissions, page groups, and anything else by yourself without a developer. Second, we don't believe in creating endless amounts of data. You're not the one who should be doing all the work. We present summarized and actionable data for everything you need in order to track changes and stay on top of your site. Oribi is also very simple to use and has a beautiful, friendly interface. So you can... Oop, apologies. Oribi is also very simple to use and has a beautiful, friendly interface, so you can easily share it with non-data savvy colleagues. Let's go over the main features Oribi offers. Codeless events. Know what led visitors to convert. As I mentioned, you can easily track any event on your website without using code. Signups, purchases, new subscribers, and more. Unlike with other tools where defining an event shows you data only from that point on, Oribi lets you see that data retroactively. You'll be able to see data for any event that occurred since installing the Oribi tracking code on your site, even if you didn't define the event right away. So every time you have questions about your site, you'll be able to get answers right away. Learn what leads website visitors to perform this event, what the conversion rate of each channel is, which pages convert best, and much more. Funnels. Create beautiful funnels in just a few clicks and learn where you're losing visitors. Individual visitor journeys. Track the activities of individual visitors, see every single event they perform, and discover what they do before they convert. Oribi makes it easy to integrate their email addresses as well. You can also view the journey's aggregation and find out what the most common journeys are for getting to a certain event or page. It will help you know where to focus and which funnels to build. Correlations. Discover how a certain event impacts another. For example, are your blog readers more likely to buy? Are visitors who view the video on your homepage more likely to sign up? Analyze your different marketing channels, learn which channels have the highest conversion rate, and find out where your best audience is coming from. Oribi also offers attribution display, which will help you better score each of your channels and ultimately understand how each channel contributes to sales and conversions. So I'll, I'll stop it there, um, but as you can see, there's a lot of value that industry standard to have when it comes to marketing analytics, especially as things shift digitally. If you don't have things like this set up, there's a lot of money being wasted through the funnel. 
And with limited budgets, you have to sort of make sure every, every dollar goes as far as possible. So leveraging software like Oribi or Google Analytics at the very base, at the very base is very, very necessary to have integrated, uh, especially with the online donation scaling even further with COVID. Um, before I go on, I, there, I, there might be any, some questions. I just want to take a look at the chat to make sure. Uh, well, well, I guess we'll answer closer to the end. Okay. Um, so next is nurturing leads and closing them. So we have CRM, so customer relationship managers. You probably already have one integrated, but just necessary to go overview. You can use something like a Salesforce, which is much more enterprise level, a lot more expensive, difficult to onboard, but once you're on, it's extremely powerful. Or something like HubSpot, which in my opinion is just as powerful as Salesforce with a lot lower barrier to entry and has a lot of add-on tools that's easy to, to build on top of. Uh, these are two classics for tech and software businesses. But there's also software focused on donations and nonprofits. So Donor Perfect is an extremely popular one that you, a lot of you may have heard of. There's Rager's Edge, and then there's Network for Good, which is meant for smaller organizations. So something like a Donor Perfect, uh, which I'll just take through if you do not have, have not heard of it, it allows you to see all the data for your donations, like geographically, uh, where is it coming from, easily process payments and uh, set up payment pages, uh, create campaign, allow your um, donors to create campaigns to, to raise capital or to raise money. Um, and ha it has that CRM integration so you could foster donor relationships uh, over time. So here's a quick video from Donor Perfect. Your donors live online. They keep up with family and friends online. They pay bills online. And chances are they donate online too. On average, online giving increases by 8% each year. So why not meet your donors where they are online and make giving easy for them? However you collect payments through online forms or on the go on your mobile device, your donor perfect system goes to work for you. Simplifying the donor's experience and collecting data for you in real time. When you enroll in DonorPerfect's payment services, your organization can effortlessly process online payments through DonorPerfect's online forms, collecting over the phone payments that process right from a donor's record and take on-site payments directly with the DP Mobile app. All of your payments are processed securely through DonorPerfect's payment services. Using DonorPerfect's merchant services means shorter turnaround time on receiving funds and lower processing fees. Through DonorPerfect online forms, you can configure your forms to match your brand and embed them right on your website. At the end of their transaction, donors can share your form to their social media pages. All forms are optimized for mobile for a smooth donor experience from anywhere. Your online forms can link right into your email appeals, which you can design and send in the snap with constant contact. It's never been easier for donors to give a one-time donation, join your monthly giving program, or create and share their own peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign on your behalf. With every gift, no matter the solicitor, gifts can be acknowledged through automated personal emails sent as soon as the gift is processed. So that's a high level overview of something like a donor perfect. So as you can see, there's a lot of different options when it comes to CRM or software. So find the one that works for you is key. Hence why I'm not diving super deep into anyone individually. Something like a donor perfect could be really useful if you're looking for just one platform to do everything. But if you're more of an advanced nonprofit and, and have a larger uh, potential base of customers, a HubSpot is much more advanced and you can use other inter, uh, integrations um, like different email fun, uh, funding funnel tools or the other tools we mentioned prior to integrate everything else into HubSpot. And with that, there's email funnels and com converting leads. First, you got to get the email. Nurturing them, email is some, one of the best ways, as many of you already may know. Uh, and there's some great tools for that. MailChimp, Active Campaign, Drip are just a few. There's a lot of email funnel tools. Uh, and even some of the CRMs like HubSpot or Donor Perfect have email automations built in. Um, so something like a MailChimp, which I'll just show everyone who are not familiar with it, has a lot of great options. Um, so you could actually create websites, and, uh, email campaigns, landing pages. Uh, so audience management is great, great, great for segmentation. You could create sign-up forms, um, target. You could create content for the emails directly in Mailchimp. So images, uh, whatever it may be. You have some great automations. So customer journeys. So for example, if a customer signs up on a specific landing page that you built uh, outside of your website, or if they sign up 
on the sign up form on, on your website, they could have different journeys and you could always, you could automate all of that. And then of course, insights and analytics. So MailChimp is one of the many powerful tools you could look into. Um, it's one of my favorites because it's the easiest in terms of user experience. Um, but there's also very powerful ones, active campaign drip. Active campaign may be more geared towards tech companies, so it may not be right for you. Uh, and then drip is really, really good for more of a B2B sales type of initiative. Uh, an example of an email. So I signed up for Charity Water just to see what the first email looked like and they sort of executed it perfectly. So it's not just leveraging software and automating it. It's also making sure your content is really on point. So a lot of things repeated from what we learned in uh, the marketing strategy um, session. First off, their mission statement is repeated. Uh, their mission to build, uh, bring clean water to every person on the planet. Secondly, they repeated that subscription call to action. That is their main call to action, monthly recurring revenue. Um, so they repeated it in that first email. But let's say I'm not ready to donate, even though they have my email, they have a transitional call to action. Watch this film, educate yourself more. So this is a perfect first email. Um, if I was ready, I would have clicked the subscription. If I wasn't, I probably, I actually did watch the film because I was interested. Um, so figuring out what your content is when it comes to that email flow and automating is just, is, is even more important than automating in and of itself. And fi the final software within the marketing phone I want to talk about is Zapier or Zapier. If you have not heard of it, it's a phenomenal tool. I know Sandra's a big fan of it, where you could integrate uh, a lot of different software. So all the software we talked about, you want to make sure they're communicating together. So you have this integrated system to do things better and more effectively. So in this example, there's a trigger. So in this case, the trigger is when I get an email in Gmail, the action, uh, we're going to copy the attachment from Gmail to Dropbox. Or I know NetSquared has the description to box, so maybe it's box. Uh, and the action is alert me in Slack for uh, about the new Dropbox file. So you could create these automations on, uh, there's thousands of apps you could leverage. So I'm gonna walk through a quick video from Xavier and just what, it, what this looks like when it comes to creating a Zap. You might not realize it, but a lot of the work you do every day can actually be done automatically. With Zapier, you can automate repetitive tasks, for example, Let's say you spend every morning downloading, then uploading CSV files full of yesterday's leads. You might even need to download email attachments and upload them into a cloud app for your team. Maybe you take the time to organize your day, your week's to-do list by grabbing tasks from email, chat, and wherever else. And while this work is incredibly important to the health of your company, it's time consuming. You are meant for more than just data entry. With Zapier, using automated workflows, which we call Zaps, you can connect two or more apps together to do the busy work for you. Either create one from scratch or grab a pre-made workflow, which we call Zap Templates. We have tens of thousands of Zap Templates that you can turn on within minutes. Let's go ahead and set up a Zap with the template. Because my team uses Gmail for our email and Box for cloud storage, I'm choosing the Zap Template with those apps. Don't worry if you use different apps. The principles I'm showing you in this Zap will apply to every Zap you make. This app will trigger whenever I receive a new email with an attachment in Gmail. It'll then upload the attachment to Box. With the template, all I need to do is authorize my Gmail and Box accounts. Personalize your Zap as much or as little as you'd like to ensure it's doing what you want it to. You can add a step to send a message to your team or even filter which attachments are added to the cloud. Your Zap can be as customized as you need it to be, depending on what you need it to do. So that's a quick overview of Zapier. So super powerful tool uh, when it comes to communicating all of these softwares we're talking about. Because at the end of the day, software is only valuable if it fits within the system. Um, each software uses that individual node. So whether it be uh, using a new CRM that you just heard of uh, or using Airtable, you could connect all these things into a, a Zapier, which is super powerful. So that was the marketing funnel. And the final part, which is we're almost done here, is measuring success. And I, this is very, very important to overview. And there's like a few softwares you could leverage. Uh, we're gonna talk about choosing your KPIs, your key performance indicators, and then measuring and tracking system. So the biggest questions is what KPIs do you choose, right? If your team doesn't know the strategy behind this, I will do a quick overview. Could definitely dive into it further if you have more questions uh, afterwards. First off is figuring out what your North Star KPI is. It's one number that you associate, that's, that's a good encompassing number to associate the success of your entire nonprofit organization. From that North Star, that one number, you have sub KPIs. These, th these numbers feed into that North Star uh, to ensure its success. And then each sub KPI could have further detailed 
uh, numbers, so detail one, two, and three, for example, that feeds into the sub KPI, which feeds into the North Star KPI. Breaking your numbers down like this is extremely important because let's say, for example, well, actually I'll go through an example. My North Star KPI is number of people served. One of the main sub KPIs is donation dollars. Donation dollars can be broken down to number of donors, dollars per donor, and retention. So if I notice that my North Star KPI for the year is I want to I want to you know help out uh, 1.2 million people, so 100,000 people served per month. Uh, each quarter I need about 300,000 people. So in order to do that, I need let's say it's a dollar a person, $300,000 in donation dollars. I just broke down my North Star KPI into my donation dollars. If I'm missing that mark, I can look at those three key feeding indicators, number of donors, dollars per donors, and retention to see which one is off and which le what levers do I have to pull or, or change to ensure that I'm hitting my donation dollar target, then feed into my number of people served target. So once you have this laid out, this will allow you to influence what marketing tactics and, and strategies are actually working and then adjust course if they're not working. Because at the end of the day, your goal, you have a mission as a nonprofit and you have to make sure you're hitting that North Star KPI uh, and marketing is just one way to build awareness and, and, and build out that funnel to close uh, to hit that, that uh, key performance indicator. So how do you measure and track these KPIs? There's two key softwares I wanna point out. So Google Sheets is a low tech version that I actually use uh, just because it's simple to use, easy to share. There's also one that I found called Gecko Board, which I'll show. So when it comes to Google Sheets, this is how I've actually laid it out for one of my organizations. There's all my KPIs laid out is the main ones, the sale, then I broke it down by uh, vertical in the organization. So sales and marketing, customer care operations, product and tech. The unit I use, the data source, and the data source usually links out, so I can just click it and go to that source. And then I track it month over month. And then what I do in Google Sheets is I leverage some conditional formatting. So if I have a target every month, so for example, let's say I want to uh, get $1,000, $100,000 in donation dollars a month. If I'm below that, it'll go red. If I'm above that, it's green. So I could figure out where am I missing the mark and what do I have to change? So by breaking it, those key performance indicators down by month and then by week, you can really be focused on that long-term goal throughout the year. And then Gecko Board is, uh, it has a dashboard that integrates with a lot of other software. So you can have a clear look at all your main KPIs. Uh, you can even project it onto a TV if you were uh, in, in office to see those KPIs every day. Um, so a lot of tech companies use, use something like a Gecko Board. But like anything, especially with software marketing, you have to be impatient with actions. So do things quickly, but patient with results. Uh, testing takes a while. Let's say it's three weeks. If it doesn't work, change. But results usually ha happen over the course of three months, six months, 12 months. So be really diligent and focused on tracking everything. A lot of the software I presented today was on tracking analytics and making sure you're on top of everything. Uh, but really be patient with the results. Look at results over the course of three to six months. So that's it. Today we covered the brand positioning at a high level, marketing funnel, and then measuring success and all the software you could leverage within. Um, so thank you for listening and I will open the floor to any questions if people have. That was excellent. Thanks, Chris. I'm just, uh, I don't think I saw any questions come through the chat yet. Um, does anybody have any questions? You can also come off mute if you like and ask away. Well, hi there, Eli in Vancouver. Let me dive in and like break the ice here. So yeah, so this is really helpful to get a sense of like the tools and the, and the stages of that marketing funnel. Um, you know, I think part of my question is to say like, so I have people in here um, and, and what I think I often get stuck with as an organization is that North Star discussion. Um, we all have our own separate work and like getting us to agree on North Stars can be sometimes challenging in any organization. Um, can you maybe give me some hints on how I might start that discussion or, or get people to some kind of common agreement so we can really identify what success looks like? That's a great question because defining success numerically is extremely important to so make sure you're on the right track. Because a lot of times people just spin their wheels and not actually making any progress towards that North Star. So I'll use an example of one of my own organizations. So I'm a director at a company called Daydream, director and partner, and we sell, so it's a sparkling water. Um, we're trying to figure out what is our North Star because we have a lot of different departments. Uh, one department is sales, right? We need revenue. One department is operations, making sure we're producing enough cans. Uh, one department might be human resources. 
So figuring out what that number is, that if this number is hit, it means that the health of our business is being tracked, is, is performing well. Um, so for example, that North Star for us is number, number of cases sold. What that means to sell those cases, we need revenue, uh, we get revenue from it. But also just as importantly, operationally, it means we're producing the cans properly. So when you're figuring out what that North Star KPI is, it has to be encompassing of a bunch of different departments that all work in coordination. Uh, where businesses fail is they usually mismanage that number where they prioritize one area of the business. Let's say it's just donation dollars in the case of nonprofits, but don't prioritize other areas like a donor retention rate is a huge one because you want to make sure you're not just getting their money, their, their money this year, you're doing it over a long period of time. So in the case of the, the mission of a, of, a, of a nonprofit, it's always around that mission, the mission towards impact. So what, what impact are you trying to make in the world? Um, put a number behind it. Even if it's arbitrary to start, let's say it's a million people served. Usually what happens is once you get there, which it happens quicker than you think, you just push the bucket down. All right, now that I hit a million, let's do 10 million. That's our new North Star KPI. And it will force everyone to change the way they think under those sub buckets and those sub KPIs to think through, okay, how, what do we have to do differently to hit that North Star now? So, um, so yeah, does that, that help answer your question, Eli? Lovely, thank you. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, there was another question here from Ian. Um, he's looking for open source or free equivalents, some of the software that you showed. Um, and I'm not sure, Ian, if you had something kind of specific, because I know <laughs> Chris covered a lot of different softwares out there. Um, I, I know, uh, Eli, you mentioned Udo, Udo, Udo .com? I honestly have never learned how to say it. But yeah, I think, yeah, Ian, I'd love some clarification from you as well, because yeah, there are so many different sets of functionality. And as you saw, no one piece of software covered all of this. Like if you're looking for a straight up CRM solution with a nonprofit flavor on it, I would definitely say start with Civi CRM. Um, it doesn't do modeling of sales funnels very well out of the, uh, out of the box, but it does lots of like donor management case management, all that kind of stuff that nonprofits need. Um, so, so that could work really well. So yeah, so I think actually, Lori, the Civi CRM might be actually a good solution for membership-based nonprofits where you can sort of you know, run that kind of flow. Another thing to look at if you've got, again, some de more developer help is to look at using something like uh, Salesforce, which also has membership-based modules where you can like, you know, send automatic reminders to people as their memberships renew and sort of help you manage that flow. And it depends really what you're looking for too. I know from, if you're looking to manage memberships, there could be some micro, um, not Microsoft, WordPress plugins um, that are free that uh, might be effective. I've used them in the past. Um, but it also depends on your needs because you kind of get what you pay for. Um, yeah, member press, I believe, is one of them. And I think there was another one called S2 member. Um, I, but I have a feeling they might have changed their name since I last looked at them. Um, it really depends what you're looking for. <laughs> there's a lot out there. Yeah, like there's, you could go full custom if you have the budget for it. Some like a WordPress, Andrew, like you mentioned, they have subscription management that you can integrate with. Um, uh, a payment processor like Stripe uh, that can manage all the subscription dollars. You can see what people subscribe to and what do they have. And then you can integrate that with your website quite easily. Uh, but also depends what technology you're currently using. So uh, a lot of software is indicative of what, 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 how are we currently built out in terms of technolo technology? What will it integrate well with? And what makes sense for what we're trying to achieve? Absolutely. There was a, um, there is another, uh, option called streak for gmail um, it's free for one user but if you're planning on using it for a team then you need to start paying but if you are kind of just one person um, it would work well with your free google work space for nonprofits account and essentially it it manages your gmail inbox to act as either a crm or a project tracking tool or order management or donor management or membership management based on emails. Um, it's a quite an interesting tool um, and it's got a lot of different uses. So 
that could be something if you're heavily email based on some items um, that might work well for you as well. Yeah, and one thing I'll definitely mention when it comes to software, what I always do with organizations I'd rather build or consulted for, start as low tech as possible because what happens is over time with that low tech, you add some, some columns and customizations, you realize what you actually need. So when it comes to automating, you have that base setup knowing what your needs are. So when you're trying to find a software, you're looking for a certain criteria. Does it have X, Y, and Z? Um, so starting low tech allows you to have like not spend money or spend too much time invested into a certain software. And then you could grow in, and then you find a software that fits your needs. There's so much software out there. You could definitely find one that's perfect for you. Like there's, there's a reason why I just, I present so many options. Um, so first start low tech and then scale up, I would say. And I actually am planning on presenting, um, uh, doing a presentation later on this year on um, five steps to select the right tool or system for your nonprofit. Um, working in the tech industry for many years as a BA and um, doing product management as well, I, I, I see that as a gap for some nonprofits and businesses in general. Um, they tend to, and that is a good suggestion, start small and figure out what you need uh, because it does all start with figuring out what you need. <laughs> So, and a lot of people have difficulty trying to figure out what it is they need because they don't also don't know what's out there. Exactly. Excellent. Were there any other questions? Yeah, and if, if there's any questions later down the road, uh, my email is in uh, either the presentation or somewhere else. You could always reach out and ask any follow-up questions, happy to answer and help out. Um, but I uh, hope the presentation was, was helpful and gave a, people a lot of options for software to leverage. I think I found it really interesting and useful and um, everyone else is saying thank you. Uh, so it looks good. So I'll, um, I'll pop Chris's email in here um, for anybody who wants to reach out to him or Chris, if you want to pop it in, I'm just trying to find it. Oh, here it is. Okay. I've got it. <laughs> there you go. You guys can reach Chris here. And if you want to reach out to me for anything or you have any other ideas for Net Squared, I will put mine in here as well. Amazing. I can type. Thank you, Sandra and Eli. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, I guess that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Chris. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Have All right. Up. Bye, everybody. Bye, Lovely. Ciao, y'all. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care.